In this video seminar for a foundation plan, we're going to go through the process of creating a foundation specifically for a sloped lot, stepping the foundation walls, and also looking at section views with top of wall dimensions. As I open up the completed plan, you can see the foundation steps down a fairly steep lot. As I change my layer set, you can see the foundation and the framing. Let's go ahead and step down a couple of floors down to the actual foundation itself. You can see the foundation is actually quite a large structure. And I'm going to go through the process in walking through creating this foundation. Let's go into the plan and take a look at the steps involved. I'm starting with a variation of the plan without the foundation. Let's go into the floor plan and take a look at the steps for actually building the foundation level on floor zero. On the far left hand side of my screen is the third floor, the uppermost floor. You can see the footprint of this floor plan is very different than the floor plan in the center of the screen. This is the bottom floor or floor one. From this floor is where I want to build the foundation and we'll start there and I'll show you the steps so that I can broaden the foundation to also support the upper third floor. While I'm on floor one, let's go into the menu and choose to build the new floor for the foundation. As we look at the options inside of the Build Foundation dialog, I'm going to make sure that I do not turn on the automatic rebuild foundation. As for the foundation type, I want to make sure that I have walls and footings. And I'm also going to choose to hang the first floor platform. Actually on the first floor is a slab with a foam insulation below that. This will cause the floor platform to be very tight and close to that slab foundation. There will not be a slab in this foundation and then my minimum stem wall height I've set to be 31 and a half. Let's go ahead and build the foundation. I'm going to go ahead and derive the foundation from the first floor and then we'll talk about how to extend it for the third floor. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup to begin with. I'm going to choose this extra wall in this area right in here. Go ahead and press delete. And I'm also going to delete this secondary wall. Now if you want to see the floor, third floor above, let's use our reference display layer. By double clicking on the floor indicator, we can actually go in and choose which reference floor indicator we're going to use. Normally you can maybe use the floor above. In this case, I'm going to choose the third floor. And then when I press F9 on the keyboard, you can actually see the floor, the third floor overlaid on here. The walls that extend out in this area are for the garage and to get those walls instead of going through and tracing over the top of that I'd find that a little bit longer process. I'm actually just going to come over to the view in the third floor. I'm going to copy those walls and then paste and hold position on the foundation floor. From the third floor let's go ahead and choose the wall tool and I'm going to grab the exterior wall. I'm going to draw a marquee around those walls that I want to copy just holding my shift key down and the left mouse button. Go ahead and grab this extra wall. I'm going to press control C on the keyboard to copy those. Then I'm going to move over to the foundation plan and from the edit menu let's go ahead and choose paste hold position. That operation will exactly stack those walls on top. While they're still highlighted let's go ahead and double click on them. Go through and make a few changes in here. First of all I'm going to go ahead and reset the default wall top and wall bottom and then I'm going to go in and choose from the foundation that these are foundation walls and then on the wall types let's go ahead and change these to an 8 inch stem wall. Next I'm going to go ahead and extend this wall up so that it connects into this area over here and we'll just pull this wall over. Then I'm going to delete these extra walls in this area. Press the delete key and to remove the doors and windows let's choose our door tool. Again hold the shift key down, draw a marquee to delete all the doors and I'll do the exact same thing with windows. Go ahead and hold the shift key down and delete the windows. That's a very fast way to create the foundation walls rather than trying to trace around that red highlight from the reference display view. Now one final thing inside this room that we ended up creating. Let's highlight it and I want to make sure that I mark that there is no roof or new ceiling over this so it won't generate attic walls on the floor above. Let's go ahead and take a 3D view and see what it looks like for the foundation. Let's go ahead and rotate around and then let's go ahead and move up a couple of floors and so we can see the structures above it. 
From this 3D view, I can actually select the wall. Sometimes you may have to press the tab key if you've got select room before wall to make sure you actually have the wall. I'm going to grab this uppermost handle. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to snap it to the bottom of the floor platform. So a little bit of busy work here as I go around and make these adjustments on the walls. Let's go ahead and pull these up and I'll do a couple more and then I'm going to go ahead and fast forward part of the video so that I can complete pulling all of those walls up. In this section right in here, I actually need to go into the floor plan view and put a break in this wall so I can actually pull that up. Let's return back to the floor plan view. I'm going to click on the floor indicator to change the reference display back to the first floor. We'll toggle on our reference display set. Right in this area is where I need to create a break. Let's use the break tool you'll find up in the upper menu. We'll come in and create a notch right in this area. Now I can return back to the 3D view and pull that wall up. I've pulled all the walls up to meet the upper third floor. Let's step our foundation back to floor zero. And now we've isolated just that foundation component. Now the next step is going to involve actually stepping the walls down the terrain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a section view and then we're going to go ahead and overlay the terrain slope and we'll go through the steps. I'm going to create a section view on one side of the plan. To do that, I'm going to use a back clip cross section. Come through here, and I'm going to draw it at least partway through the house and then generate the elevation of this. I also want to overlay the terrain so I know exactly where to step the foundation. Let's go ahead and turn on the layer display set. Let's find our terrain perimeter and I'm going to display that layer and then we can overlay that to see where the slope is. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Now what I want to do is I want to actually draw a CAD line that represents the slope and then we'll use that as a guideline to then create our stepping of the bottom of this foundation wall. Using the line tool, let's just go down through here. Let's draw a line that should match the slope in this area right in here. And since the house steps back and the slope changes in this area, I'm going to use the break tool. You'll find this in the lower edit menu. I'm going to create a break right in this line and then we're going to go ahead and pull this section up per the terrain from my topo plan. Now while that line is still selected, let's use the copy tool and let's create a copy of this for the frost line. I'm just going to pull this down about 24 inches. Press the tab key here. I'm going to go ahead and enter in 24 inches in this area. And then let's change the line style to be a dashed line style. Let's just go in here and I'm just going to choose it to be a dashed line style. And then I'll go ahead and turn that terrain perimeter off so that it doesn't clutter up the section view. The upper line represents the expected slope. The lower line represents the frost line for the foundation footings. Now according to the structural engineer, if I open up the completed foundation plan, there are some guidelines that we can't step this more than two and a half feet in vertical distance and it also can't be less than four feet in the horizontal direction. So let's use this as a guideline as we begin stepping the foundation. I'm going to begin on the first sidewall over here, selecting the bottom of it. and I'm going to pull this down just past the frost line right in this area right here. A lot of times I'll toggle my temporary dimensions on or off. There's a tool over here off to the side for temporary dimensions. I've also assigned a hotkey for these. T on the keyboard is the shortcut for temporary dimensions if you're using X10 and newer. The temporary dimensions will help you in sizing your stem walls. Again, if you have a requirement, in my case it's no higher than 30 inches on the step vertically and minimum of 48 inches on the horizontal step. Once I've got my first step in here, I'm going to actually create a break on the bottom of this wall down in here. Make sure that that is highlighted using the break tool. Let's go ahead and create a break in here and now I'm going to go ahead and step that wall up. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Again, if I press the tab key, I can actually come in here. In this case, let's put in 30 inches set the angle at a 90 degree and then that will step that wall up that minimum distance that I need to have. If I click on this side of the wall again using your temporary dimensions if I click on the side over here let's go ahead and enter in a dimension in here I'm going to put in three foot nine remember my minimum is four four feet but that includes the thickness of this eight inch wall so that will work out just fine. 
Again, let's repeat the steps that we've just done here. On this segment over here to create a step, I'm going to use the break tool. This is not the break wall, but just the break line. I'm going to create a notch over in this area. Select this bottom edge. I'll go ahead and press the tab key. Put in 30 inches for the minimum. Again, the angle needs to be at 90 degrees. I'll click on this edge over here and I'll put in the minimum of four feet. On this segment, I'm going to go ahead and put in six feet. And then I'm going to go ahead and create another break in this area right down in here using the break tool. Create a notch in here. Again, let's go ahead and pull this up. I'm going to press the tab key, enter in 30 inches. Make sure the angle is at 90 degrees. And then for this segment down here, I'm going to go ahead and enter in four feet. And so stepping the foundation involves a little bit of busy work in this case. You can also do this from your 3D view if I switch over. Obviously it's not as accurate and I like to use that terrain guideline, but you can come in here and you can also pull these walls up and snap them into place relatively easily. Sometimes you need to pull them down a little bit. I'll hold the control key down, but you can then get those alignments in this view as well, moving these walls around. But again, the most accurate way to move these walls is in your elevation view and overlaying your terrain. I've completed stepping the foundation walls up the slope. As you rotate around, you can see that it's also stepped on the other side. Again, using the terrain overlay slope is a great way to help in figuring out where to step the terrain, also the temporary dimensions. Here are a few photos of a foundation that's very similar to the one that we're working on adjacent to the project. You can see that the stepping goes down the slope and when you do your plan set you want to make sure that you have enough of the detail for the foundation subcontractors to set the forms accurately. Let's look at a couple of steps that I used to overlay not only the plan view but also the elevation views for the top of wall and bottom of footing. To set the top of wall and the bottom of footing for the foundation walls, I've taken the topo map, you see the 2300, 2290, and we've determined what those heights should be. Usually when I get my topo map, I will import this from the surveyor. We have another video on importing DWG files, and you can use that information to help you in setting your foundation walls. And real quickly, if you're using sea level information, let's make sure that there's a quick way to do that. I'm going to just hop into a new plan and show you the steps real quickly. Step one, let's create our terrain perimeter. Next, I'm going to add our elevation data in the form of elevation lines. So let's just draw three lines in here, one in the middle and one at each end. And in the elevation data is where you can actually set the sea level information. To begin, let's put in 2,200 feet. And when you press the tab key, that actually is displaying in inches. A lot of times when I'm working with my terrain, I will change that display to decimal feet. Let's take this middle line and I'm going to set this to 22.10 and then on the final line let's go ahead and set that to 22.20. In the terrain menu you can force the build terrain on to display the topo information. That is also automatically generated typically when you take a 3D view. Let's take a 3D view of the terrain. So you can see I have a fairly gradual slope in this example and then back in the floor plan view as you zoom in, you can actually see the topo information for each of those contour lines. Again, if you're working with a surveyor, you can ask for the DWG file, import that terrain data, and then you have your sea level information. Now back in the foundation plan, you can see that I've listed text in the floor plan view for the top of stem wall in several places. And I also like to use this in the case of our elevation views. Let's open up an existing elevation view that I've created. In this view of the back of the foundation, you can see that I've listed the top of each one of these stem walls as well as the bottom of the footing. Let's take a look at the side elevation. The side elevation shows the stepping down the terrain, and I've used callouts along the side here, bottom of footing, top of subfloor, and then a few other key points. These are nothing more than callouts that I've used for dimensioning. And then also to isolate just the foundation walls, notice that I'm using a layer set for my foundation walls only. I've turned off all of the other components in the design, the normal walls, the roof, other aspects so that I've just isolated this and then I can send this out to my layout sheet. Now one of the ways you can generate this is to use your auto story pole dimension and then generate your callouts to do that. Let me show you a couple of steps that you might go about in generating that. From the foundation plan, let's use the back clip cross section view and I'm going to cut a section that goes through at least the majority of the house. From this view, you can actually use a tool called the auto story pole dimensions. 
Before I select that, let's go ahead and do the setup in the defaults of this tool so we can generate exactly what we're after. Using the default setting, let's go down to the dimensions and you'll find a option for the auto story pole dimensions. In the locate elevations, you can come in here and choose what you want. In this case, I'm actually just going to choose the top of subfloor for each of the floors to make it very clean to begin with. Also, on the general panel, I'm going to place those dimensions on the right. Notice you can control the reach and a few other things. Now that that is set up accurately, let's go ahead and place those automatic story pole dimensions. The story pole dimensions now indicate each of the top of the subfloors. Now I'm going to change my layer set to just isolate the foundation walls. And I've created a view of this called Section View Foundation Walls Only. That's going to turn off the layers of all of the other components and just isolate it to the foundation. You can now click on this story pole dimension and come over here and extend that to the various levels that you want. I've also used callouts to indicate other components. Let's go ahead and use the callout tool to indicate where the bottom of the footing is and I can then pull it into a couple of the other stem wall tops. Now I've used the callout tool to help me mark these. I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to place a callout marker right in this area for the top of the stem wall. From the callout, let's go ahead and I'm going to mark this that it's floor one. From the floor plan, it indicated it was 2,298 feet and eight and seven eighths inches. From the style of the callout, let's go ahead and change that to a rectangle. And on the attributes, let's go ahead and remove the arrows. And then finally, let's make the sizing to be automatic so it fits the text. And I'll just go ahead and pull that line over to this side. While that callout is still highlighted, let's use the copy tool. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that down to the bottom of the footing. Now from the floor plan, the bottom of the footing had indicated it was 22, 86, 5, and a half. While I'm dragging this down, I'm going to press the tab key. And in this case, I'm going to enter in a dimension. I have to know that dimension exactly, so I'm just going to type it in, 12 foot, 3 and 3 eighths. Now if you don't know what the dimension is, in this case like I did, you can use the dimension tool, the end to end dimension, come down and dimension between the two callouts and get that specifically because eventually I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete the story pole because I'd rather use these callouts. Let's do a couple more. Again, I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to pull it up in this area right in here. Let's go ahead and pull it until it meets this area over here and then we'll just simply come in here and align this. And again, I'll just use this existing dimension. You can come up here, pull that into place. While the callout is selected, let's go ahead and use the copy tool. And in this case, I'm just going to snap it onto the top of that existing story pole dimension. And once I've finished that, I'll go ahead and press delete to remove the story pole. And then you can extend these callouts lines so you can get very specific and then use the dimension tool. Again, I use the end to end dimension initially and now I can get those, provide that level of detail on the foundation plan. And of course, open up each of the callouts and specify the elevation information and the callout label. And when I open up the completed elevation, you notice that along the top, I also added the grid lines in here. Those are also callouts you'll see on the floor plan and then also put in the dimensions that you can then translate back into the floor plan to provide that level of detail. And when I open up the completed plan, you can see in this case, I've got a full elevation. Notice along the foundation, I've left the slope marker for the terrain on, used the auto story pole, drew a few CAD objects in here for the retaining wall along the back. And then when we go to the foundation plan, what I did is I had a little extra space on the foundation floor plan, which is a level above the actual foundation, use those elevation views we were just creating and then on the actual foundation plan itself put a 3D image in here and then the details of the 2D plan and the foundation plan itself. In the video seminar for the floor plan I talked about creating a pseudo wall for the purposes of creating a foundation that's separate from the floor plan but being able to use it to stack the walls. In the 3D view let's take a look at what that means. Here is the foundation floor and if I step up to the floor above it you can see that there are no concrete walls. However, in that foundation view you can see that what happens the stem wall actually goes all the way up to the three floors. And in the floor plan view I want to create an accurate view but I also don't want to put concrete on this first floor. You can see in the floor plan I've created on floor one. Let's zoom in specifically into this area. I've created this wall 
that has a concrete-like appearance, but there is actually not a wall there. I've called it a pseudo wall. Let's go back in and take a look at it as a refresher from that video. This pseudo wall, I actually have this 8-inch concrete wall, but notice I changed the material to an air gap. Therefore, when I take a 3D view of it, you don't see any concrete. And the air gap at 8 inches allows that to align through the different floors. It will also be more accurate for my materials list because it's not going to calculate any concrete from this wall type. And then as I move up to the second floor, again, I've used the same pseudo wall for stacking. The third floor is just stick framed. And as we kind of walk back down to the foundation, you can see that here is that 8 inch stem wall that is very large in the 3D view. You can see what that looks like. So that's a process that I've used to create this foundation. Isolate floor one as a floor plan foundation, and then actually create the foundation with only concrete on it. As I open up my construction, drawing, notice that it says foundation floor plan and it shows the stick framing but it also shows this pseudo wall down in this area and then on the foundation plan itself I've only shown the concrete wall. A technique that I've used and if it of, is of interest to you you can build a wall type set your concrete as a pseudo wall it will help you in aligning it and also be more accurate in your materials list. Well, that concludes this seminar on the foundation plan. Remember, we began creating our foundation plan from the first floor. I copied the walls from the third floor so that it would then support them, change them to a stem wall, reset the height, and then in elevation views, I pulled all of the walls up to the bottom of the subfloors, and then in a section view, I overlaid the terrain. I used a line tool to project the slope, and then I used the stepping with a break line tool and step the foundation. And then finally, I took a elevation view, used the auto story pole dimensions to get my initial dimension set, and then I overlaid callouts, used the end-to-end -end dimension so that I could provide that level of detail.